Thank you very much for being here with me. Please uh, tell me your name and uh, the project that you are um, associated with today. <laughs> My name is Nick Spanos. I'm an early Bitcoin adopter and uh, I opened the first uh, live cryptocurrency exchange in 2013 right next to the New York Stock Exchange on the first floor, on the ground floor, 6,000 square feet. Hundreds of people trading and uh, I, I know, remember I, traders actually coming over, yeah. very experienced, and doing the thing. And, and, and what was amazing, uh, I'm not a, a professional in that, uh, uh, is to see the settlement of the trades right there uh, in, in, in real time with a, an electronic board showing the, the quotes and, and really, you know, serious money uh, being, being involved. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, I don't remember how much. <laughs> no, I didn't say how much. <laughs> but. Uh... Uh, yeah, and they wanted to know how we were clearing those trades, different agencies, and I said, well, the blockchain clears on the blockchain. They thought we were clearing them in-house, and they wanted to maybe probably send us a letter that we're doing something wrong by clearing trades, uh, facilitating the clearing of uh, trades, which uh, we didn't, you know, the blockchain. So then I said, well, you know, these trades are being cleared by mining machines all over the world. Uh, some of them are even under some kids' beds and stuff in their basement. So you're gonna have to find them and try to charge them or something, but uh, yeah, I mean, um, uh, as an activist, uh, you know, we helped spearhead uh, audit the Fed bill, uh, end the Fed movement, worked for Dr. Ron Paul, who was always, uh, as a matter of fact, he got into politics right when we came off the gold standard fully with uh, Nixon. And uh, was, he explained to us the perils of uh, centralized fiat currency, limitless centralized fiat currency. And, 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 and today uh, that view is uh, strongly vindicated by the trillions of dollars that are being printed uh, in a limitless manner, uh, as yeah. you say. So um, in the uh, intervening years, uh, Bitcoin has been declared dead a hundred times over. Uh, China prohibited it like uh, half a dozen times, if not more. And each of these do nothing but weaken uh, the uh, position of uh, the uh, incumbent established system, whether financial or military, uh, uh, or the, the, the set of regulations that do not promote uh, freedom, uh, but are put in place in order to um, protect the interests of the existing players. So how do you feel about uh, new waves of uh, uh, not only Bitcoin, but crypto enthusiasts uh, joining uh, uh, this ecosystem? Uh, do you think that they uh, are interested in the original mission? Do they believe in it? Uh, is it uh, uh, at least in part responsibility of people like you to rekindle that uh, revolutionary flame? Well, yeah, um, in the beginning it was only libertarians. And uh, then uh, Silicon Valley and uh, jumped in. But yeah, listen. I never wanted to uh, uh, believe that, you know, some people were in it for their own only good, but that was my perspective. But uh, I think that, you know, all the other blockchains are test beds for what Bitcoin's going to become. And uh, that's happened in the past, it's probably going to happen again. Of course, I'm a, I'm a Bitcoin maximalist. But with a small m, uh, I appreciate other projects that are uh, spearheading uh, technological advances. And uh, if Bitcoin went through every permutation of everything anyone has ever thought of, it might not be as powerful as it is today. It's powerful as it is today because it's, uh, it's become a standard, because it's, um, I say it's, uh, it's stable yeah. and it doesn't do much. Uh, and it's not some money is not supposed to do that much. Um, the different layers uh, are doing more and more each day on Bitcoin and uh, many other chains, you know, Ethereum, 
uh, with the smart contracts and uh, the, deck, the, the decentralized exchanges and uh, decentralized uh, or self-custodianship uh, when you're inside of a uh, financial transaction where you still have control of your funds to be able to withdraw uh, is an incredible thing. And then uh, Binance, Smart Chain came in with their uh, lower fees because they didn't have the proof of work and uh, everyone jumped on that and now everyone's jumping on uh, Solana, uh, Serum on Solana, the Serum uh, project on Solana has, uh, you know, Solana has an uh, order book, on-chain order book. So uh, that's going to that's gonna take off. It's taken off already. And uh, I think it's an incredible place that we live in right now. I'm, uh, I'm stoked by uh, what's transpired already. I wish maybe, you know, if I did something to help it, I'm very happy with myself. And, uh, you know, it's up to the rest of us now to keep pushing the ball forward of freedom, of monetary freedom, financial freedom. Uh, you know, the government bullies in the past. And when I say government bullies, I mean, you know, banks who hire uh, lobbyists and uh, pay and uh, get donations to the politicians and stuff. Uh, we're talking about the United States. Uh, they have a, a, a stronghold, or they have had a stronghold so far, so far uh, in uh, financial matters and uh, things are changing every day. And, and uh, it is better. surprising that uh, even those players that want to be totally uh, uh, operating by the book and are opening and forthcoming towards the regulators are, are unable to engage in a constructive manner. I am referring to the recent rebuttal that uh, um, Coinbase received when they said, okay, let's sit down and, and talk about the fact that we would like to uh, uh, introduce uh, some new instruments uh, based on blockchain. And the immediate answer by the SEC was, oh, we will just sue you. And that is not the good start for a constructive dialogue, right? So. Do you think that it is worthwhile to try to engage with the regulators or um, those who are passionate about these new technologies should build what they can and, and go ahead uh, regardless of the old kind of thinking? Of course, it's going to happen anyway. If it's not going to happen in the United States, it's going to happen somewhere else. And if it happens somewhere else, everyone's going to move their money to the place that it's happening in. So. Uh, uh, you know, Blockbuster Video went out. We had a big video rental outfit that every corner had a Blockbuster Video and it was a public company and they'd sell the, the overinflated price on the shares because they had, well, you know, their market makers and stuff manipulating the prices and uh, all of a sudden, you know, the internet came out, they didn't adopt fast enough and then they're gone. So uh, many industries didn't adopt fast enough and uh, uh, they died. It's like the meteor, of course, hit the the planet, the asteroid hit the planet, and uh, these guys are dinosaurs eating the leaves, and the leaves are turning brown, and they don't, they have a, they're like, oh, they're a little brown, but uh, screw them, we're big and strong, and then there's no food left, and they die, and they turn into oil for later generations. But uh, I'm not sure. I think, uh, are they going to adopt? They have to adopt. They have all these smart people telling them what's happening. They're going to have to listen to them, because being a public company, if you screw up, you know, you're afraid of screwing up, so... Uh, it, 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 you, you just uh, uh, made an analogy uh, on one, sand, one, one side, uh, Blockbuster and the dinosaurs, uh, and uh, analogous to the United States and the federal uh, uh, financial system. Uh, one uh, novel factor is the extreme level of interoperability and the extreme nimbleness of uh, Bitcoin and, and, and blockchain. Do you think that uh, uh, rather than selling their uh, Bitcoin like they did after Silk Road, uh, the U.S. government should uh, copy uh, Bulgaria, who are capable of paying off their national debt because they didn't sell their Bitcoin, but they kept it? Uh, could the U.S. start accumulating uh, Bitcoin 
uh, as a reserve uh, in order to bootstrap themselves in the future? Sure, they should. <laughs> <laughs> so what are they going to do? They're going to print trillions of dollars and buy the Bitcoin, so the price of the Bitcoin is going to go through the moon, right? And uh, the people who save their dollars are the ones that are going to be affected. So I'm not sure if that's something I would feel comfortable with, but uh, it's probably going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not afraid to inflate the amount of dollars that are out there. And uh, first of all, I think it's a crime because you're actually stealing from people who saved and accumulated within time their their work in these green pieces of these lithograms of dead people. And uh, by printing more of them, um, uh, creating more electronic ones, I think uh, that they're robbing usually the older people mm -hmm. who, and uh, I don't think that's uh, respectable, you know. Um, in, in the, in the 5,000 year history of uh, debt, there has always been uh, a moment when a given king or emperor would say, oh, this is not going to work. And uh, either through a war uh, or through some other cataclysm, uh, they made tabula rasa. And that literally meant that the reciprocal obligations were cleaned away. The slate was clean and they could start over, you know, sometimes repeating the same mistakes. Um, can we learn from that past? Can uh, the current debt cycle be broken uh, without uh, the cataclysmic event, uh, given that we have uh, tens of thousands of uh, nuclear bombs that are on the ready to make an excessively clean slate? I think those nuclear bombs were built with uh, fake money. You know, if the wars have been fueled, the world wars showed up, you know, after the uh, Federal Reserve Act of 1913, yeah. yeah. So I think uh, people in uh, the military industrial complex uh, want to get their friends more money who are building these uh, million, uh, $20 million bombs so they could bomb $7 tents. It's a financial uh, uh, orgy, if you excuse the word. I mean, these guys, they wouldn't exist if something you had to do work to uh, create the, the value, you know? If the central bank had to accumulate Bitcoin <clears throat> and everyone understood that the dollar was worthless, uh, things would be a lot different today. And uh, hopefully things go in that direction because, you know, overspending is not a, <clears throat> it doesn't really happen the way it does. I mean, they're spending, like uh, drunken sailors because they have the they own the printing press so they can have wars they can have build bombs or nuclear bombs they can do whatever they want uh, no one's feeling it but uh if you had to dig holes to find gold or you had to burn electricity to to accumulate bitcoin things would be different the decision making the budget would be the budget right now the budget isn't really the budget because they can just print whatever they want after anyway uh, Bitcoin mining uh, is uh, um, potentially um, the um, seed of a new uh, planetary uh, energy financial system where uh, rather than being uh, geographically concentrated like oil today uh, with a couple of trillion dollars of subsidies per year in protecting the various uh, flows of, of, of oil through military expenditures, uh, the availability of solar energy and uh, hydro um, makes it possible to uh, create value from energy every, anywhere and then instantaneously transfer that value for whatever useful work to be done. Maybe new energy where it is needed more or maybe organizing and uh, deploying resources. Uh, this uh, will potentially substitute the current petrol dollar system. Uh, as a Bitcoin maximalist with a uh, small m, uh, do you think that proof of work is here to stay? Uh, or do you think that uh, proof of stake is in some sense more desirable? Or, or can be a viable alternative? Well, you know, hybrids of 
uh, proof of work, proof of stake, and uh, other systems are probably going to be an answer. Uh, proof of work has brought electricity to many places that electricity wasn't uh, uh, being generated, even though the the uh, so let's say up in the Hudson River, a uh, Hudson uh, Bay area in ca Canada, they had hundreds of uh, hydroelectric plants that were just rotting away and. Uh, and now, because of uh, Bitcoin mining over there, they've uh, upgraded the plant, upgraded the hydroelectric systems. There's places all over the world that all of a sudden you're going to bring electricity to because they couldn't get it there in the first place because it's going to be subsidized by Bitcoin. And Bitcoin's a balance loading mechanism for electricity because before, what are you going to do? Build a bunch of widgets somewhere and try to sell them to move the value from one place where you can generate electricity cheaply to move the value to another place? No, you can just put the Bitcoin uh, uh, mining machines there and move the value to a place that uh, after the generator over there, you can make things happen somewhere else. So <clears throat> a lot of people think, oh, Bitcoin has this huge carbon footprint and blah, 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 but it's over 50% hydro right now and it's uh, gonna get even more so in that, uh, in that way. And everyone's praising the electric car. The electric car is running on, you know, coal plants and stuff. So I'm not really, uh, a fan of all that. Most of uh, Musk, you know, Musk's company's money over there the, comes from uh, tax credits that they've invented out of thin air. Even though the electricity that's being used for those cars are probably coming out of a coal plant. So, uh, you know, everything's going to change and uh, we're helping bring these systems to light. And, uh, you know, even in the most darkness, the smallest light shines brightest and uh, uh, i think that is a wonderful way to uh, uh, bring uh, our conversation to to this promising end let's keep the light of bitcoin shining bright uh, in order to illuminate the darkness uh, nick thank you very much thank you thank you thanks for having me